Hello. We are now on the fifth Sunday of Lent. The drama of the Passion of our Lord is approaching. The Church has traditionally called this day Passion Sunday because as the Bride of Christ, the Church wants to accompany Christ very closely in all the sufferings He will endure for our salvation. One striking liturgical sign of Passion Sunday is the traditional practice of veiling all the Church's crucifixes and images with purple clothes. The Church shares Christ's sorrow with all of her children and invites us to intensify the spirit of penance since her Redeemer is being persecuted and humiliated. The glory of Christ is veiled. In today's Gospel, St. John tells us how after the most outstanding miracle of Jesus, the Lord gets in return two contrasting attitudes. Those who are open to believe are determined to follow the Son of God. And those who are hardened in their hearts resist the evidence of Christ's power and determine to kill him from that date onward. The Lord, therefore, cannot appear in public anymore. Jesus will be hidden at the until point in time. The passion is at hand. Let us accompany Christ and unite ourselves to the sufferings of the heart of Jesus with our own compassion, following the advice of St. Ignatius, of having sorrow with Christ in sorrow, because of the great affliction Christ endures for me. Let us reflect now on three ideas in today's Gospel where Jesus reveals himself as our resurrection and life. Firstly, the Lord intentionally wants his disciples to know that Lazarus has passed away. Jesus didn't want to spare his dearest friend this deadly illness. What a paradox! Immediately after, the Lord clarified to his disciples the reason for it, saying, I'm glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Lazarus' death was necessary then to reveal God's glory later. We may apply this to this time of pandemic in which we have to live now. The Lord has always something greater in mind, greater than our earthly concerns. The life of faith, eternal life, is way more important than the things of this passing life. The Lord always has everything under control. We should be sure that a greater spiritual good will come soon. So let us pray, live a more devout life, and surrender ourselves to God's loving hands. Secondly, the evangelist shows us a moving episode when Jesus reaches Martha and Mary in their pain. Both sisters were dear friends of Jesus, like Lazarus. Nevertheless, the Lord puts a powerful challenge for their faith. They both firmly believe in Christ, but since he doesn't fulfill on time their request of healing his brother, their faith has to undergo a new test of suffering. As soon as they see the Master, Martha and Mary pass on to him the sweet reproach, If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. At these words, Jesus deeply moved, also wept with them. How human and compassionate is the heart of Jesus Christ. He is never indifferent to our sufferings. If he asks us to suffer for him, for our own spiritual benefit, let us be sure he is also suffering and weeping with us, and preparing a future grace for us, if we persevere in the test. Thirdly, the stupendous miracle. After four days of mourning, Christ will wipe out any doubts about his divinity by bringing Lazarus back to life. Jesus is true man. His human and sensitive heart knows how to be compassionate and merciful before our struggles and faults. And since he is also the Son of God, he can free us from our sins and introduce us in a new life of grace and holiness. Dear brothers and sisters, in this holy time of grace and conversion, let us accompany Christ with a generous heart and reconcile once more with him. Let us renew our faith and trust in him who is our resurrection and life, being certain that if we believe in him, even if we die, we will live by him. God bless you.
flores de mí.